Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Boxing Day, Happy Kwanzaa. There's a Muslim holiday. Um, or you can just say Happy Holidays. Mm -hmm. It's easier. And that's why people do it. Not because they're being offensive, but that's what they but do. No, but people sacrificed. They like, did. A it lot. was a war. It was a war on Christmas that was won. And, it was won. and the gift that you get for the war being won is a new episode of From the Shop. Frey can't be here because he's sleepy, I think. Mm -hmm. He said, I talked to him, he was like, I, I, I'm tired. So. I really, I really didn't think coughing directly into his mouth would get him sick. I did. Yeah, did you? I did. Yeah, yeah. Uh, especially when you spit in there too. Well, you know, but he like he had his mouth wide open. Yeah. He was ready for it. It was weird. It was Christmas. It was Christmas. What are you supposed to do on Christmas? Christmas miracle. That's what we do. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> maybe I may I'm misunderstanding the holiday traditions. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. But anyway, new from the shop. Yes. New books. Uh, even though it's the day after Christmas mm -hmm. or two days after Christmas if it's Wednesday. Yeah. But uh, we'll start with uh, Star Wars because Star Wars came out. Uh, like a week or two ago. And whatever you think of Star Wars, uh, this is uh, the Storms of Crate, which is about that planet that they wind up in at the end, the salty planet with Salt. its red. And this is how they find it. Um, which seems like it's just like a generic, like, oh, they're just, now they have a tie about how they found the planet <laughs> at the end. Like, I don't care about that. But it's a good, it's a good book. It feels like it's almost like a side issue of uh, the main series mm -hmm. because they bring in Scar Squadron, that yeah. group of Stormtroopers that's led by the guy with the lightsaber. Don't remember his name. But, uh, so they bring them into it. The guy it. with the lightsaber. That was his yeah. name. Yeah, and it's a, it's a natural jumping off point from the actual series because they're looking for a rebel base where they can, because uh, it's between New Hope and Empire, and this is one of the possibilities. And uh, you don't really learn anything new about the planet, mm -hmm. but it's a nice little just one-off story with uh, Luke, Leia, mm -hmm. and Han, because um, you're not going to get them in the main series anymore. Spoilers! Um, so this is the only place you can get those stories. Wait, um, wait, wait. Princess Leia survived the last one. Yeah. Why, why wouldn't she be in any more movies? <laughs> well, you Did something know. happen to Carrie Fisher? Yeah, almost oh. exactly a year ago. Oh. But uh, it's the a good art's book. Really art's good. by Mike Mayhew. I like the art. And the art's very, like, photorealistic kind of thing. Um, yeah, no, I don't have anything bad to say about it. There's some cool things. Uh, Ben Blacker and Ben Acker are the writers. They also write some Star Wars books, and I think they're on the... Lucasfilm story team. Okay. And I, th I think just from this, they must really love Wedge and Antilles. Yeah. Because Wedge has like a cooler moment in this than he ever had in any of the movies. Yeah, no. He's so never, that was a cool moment. He's never been. <coughs> yeah. The actor played Wedge until he's still alive? I think so, yeah. Was he? He's no, he he's not been, been in the movies now. He hasn't been in it. Lando hasn't been in it. Look for their comebacks and deaths yeah, in uh, look 2019. For, uh, well, I don't know. If, <laughs> if Ryan Johnson didn't kill him now, I don't think he's ever going to. Because <laughs> they killed almost everything about the originals. But, um... Yeah, no, it's a good book. It's a good one-off. Uh, if you're right, reading the series, it's cool. If you're not reading the series, you don't have to. Um, but you should, mm -hmm. if you're a Star Wars fan. Yeah, uh, yeah and it's all, all around good. I'd give it a 7 out of 10 myself. You okay. liked it? Yeah, I enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think it was as, as good as some of the other Star Wars comics. Yeah, but, it, but for I, a one-off. Yeah, no, it wasn't bad. And I like the art. I like yeah. Mike Mayhew's art a lot. Um, it was an interesting one-off. Yeah. You know, it's cool. I like it. Okay. What do you got? Our next book, this is Hawkman Found. This is a spinning off of uh, DC Metal. Uh, this is by Jeff Lemire, featuring his return to DC Comics, and Brian Hitch on art. Um, for those who have missed Brian Hitch on art and not so much on writing, um, it's a nice welcome back to Brian Hitch, because this is pretty good Hitch. Um, as for the writing, I, I liked it. I really I liked it most of it. Like, like you said, Sam, I think the weakest parts of the book are the things that directly tie into metal. Yeah. Because I think some people really, really, really like metal, and I'm just not feeling it as much as I want to. Yeah. Um, that aside, it's a really cool uh, Hawkman one-off. Um, I think DC has done a bit of a disservice to the work Jeff Johns did on Hawkman. Because for a long, long time, Hawkman was the most convoluted character yeah. anywhere. And I think Jeff Johns did a lot of work to... like bring it all together and mm -hmm. just in the Hawkman series and in JSA and he basically did it just to combine all the versions of the character yeah. and make it comprehensible yeah did a great job and then New 52 happened yeah, and they just shit on everything and then DC Metal happened and they shit on some more and it's like now he's as convoluted as he was uh -huh. before Jeff Johns took over yeah. the character and so that, that's confusing but um, all that to the side this is a pretty much standalone Hawkman adventure you can pretty much follow it I think pretty much without following metal mm -hmm. almost because it's pretty much just Hawkman abandoned on this planet and it seems like he's repeating the uh, what happened yeah and he's got his uh, the, um, the his past lives are also there yeah I, I don't know I think you need to read metal to understand like a lot of the 
the worst parts of the book, which are the metal parts, the whole foundry of worlds thing, this yeah. thing at the end. I mean, it's it's not like I don't really like any of those ideas. Um, when it's not talking about anything metal, it's cool. When it gets into metal, especially like this, this like I don't know. It's it's like Grant Morrison at his worst, the the metal stuff. Yeah. So I don't know. I'd like to get Jeff Johns drunk one day, and just talk to him about like how he really feels about some of the stuff DC's done to his works. You know, because like Rebirth was like a huge like you know, hey, I was doing this bunch of good stuff. Can we can we go back to that? And they did a lot. Like they brought Wally back. But I want to like know what he thinks about like what happened to the Teen Titans, to Legion, to JSA, to Hawkman, to all these things because the, he can't be happy with it. You know, it's like you know. I can't imagine J.J. Abrams is happy with everything Johnson did in Star Wars, but he has to say he did. Same thing with Jeff yeah. Johns, you know? Because you're, I mean, you're a company you, you man. Gotta, you can't just say, hey, fuck DC. <laughs> because but it's, that's it's his bread and butter. But I really like to know what Jeff Johns thinks about these things mm-hmm. because he put a lot of good work and then this book is somewhat good. It's not Jeff Lemire's fault, Jeff Lemire, whatever his name is. It's not his fault, but I mean, like, to tie into metal is just, it's the worst parts of the book. And it hurts yeah. the book. Art's fine. Or Brian Hitch. It's not his best work, not his worst work. Yeah. I would give it I would give it six out of ten Lugos though. Yeah. Because I, I enjoyed enough of it to overcome the metal of it. Yeah. No, if you love metal, if you're reading metal and you like it, then this is another good metal book. If you're not, it's slightly better than some of metal. Yeah. That's all. And next up, Doomsday Clock number two. Um art's great, first and foremost. Mm-hmm. Gary Frank is great on art. The story's really good. I think I know I wasn't alive or reading comics or able to read mm-hmm. when Watchmen came out. Um, so I never read it like single issues, Mm -hmm. but I feel like reading the graphic novel is much better than reading single issues. So I feel like once this is all collected, it's going to be amazing. Mm -hmm. But now I feel like I read a chapter and then I just like, I have to wait a month before I read another chapter. It feels very, very much like a, like a book that you're reading and Mm -hmm. you're just reading one chapter at a time. And you wouldn't stop at one chapter. Yeah. And it's not like there's not enough in here to keep it interesting. There's a huge amount of stuff in here and it's very dense, as you Mm -hmm. said. But it's just, and it's, you know, it's worth the, the price tag. It's, but it's just, I want more. I want to read it all at once. Yeah. I want everything now. I'm, you yeah. know, I want it now. Um, good story. It's not going where I expected it to, um, which is cool in this, in this, um, in this book. Um, I'm just interested in seeing where it goes. I'm, yeah. They got me. I'm in the story. I just wish it was, I want all of it. Yeah, no. I, good for Gary Frank, you know, two in yeah. two months so far. You and know, they both look great. It doesn't look rushed. Yeah. It's really um, good. But here's the thing the, the backup material in this issue, they released, they released it, it yeah. online, and you might want to read the backup material before you read the issue itself, I think. Right? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Because there's, yeah. there's information in the backup material that will help you with the story. I mean, this is taking place a year, a year in DC's future. Yeah. So this is covering stuff that ha- hasn't <coughs> been in any of the other books. Yeah. And it's cool stuff. But I think you would get more from it if you read the backup material before reading the main story. Maybe that's why they released it. Yeah. But I don't know. But if they were doing that, I don't know why they wouldn't just do it in the last yeah, no. issue. But uh, like you said, Gary Frank's art is just yeah. on point. That's really He's cool. one of my favorite artists. The story is cool. The new characters, the mime, and the, yeah. uh, there's some surprise appearances in the book. Yeah. Um, more clues as to who Rorschach is or who he isn't. Um, they they definitely like pretty much say it's not two characters who are possibilities. Mm-hmm. Which leaves like one or somebody who we don't know, which yeah. is possible because it doesn't have to be somebody you know. You know, it doesn't <laughs> have to be. It should be, but it doesn't have to be. Um, and this one, last one, had Watchmen characters and Superman at the end. Mm-hmm. This one is mostly Watchmen characters and Lex and Batman. Yeah. So it's cool. It's not just Superman and Manhattan, even though mm-hmm. if that's where the story was going to go. But it's uh, it's cool. They also brought up another idea, which I, I didn't think about, which w- what um, Doc Manhattan might be doing in this world. Yeah. Which is, we'll see what happens. But that's kind of cool. Yeah. It just, it just, it just. I need, I need more. Yeah, I want more. I, I need want more. It, like bi-weekly, give it, give it. You know, like all the other DC books. But then Gary Frank, yeah, had to have much yeah, more yeah, time probably never be able to do it for this quality. But just, it just feels like you're just getting even after two issues. Yeah. If this, if this issue and the first issue was yeah. like one DC Rebirth size one issue, yeah, I think I'd feel much more uh, satisfied. Yeah, I think. The fact that this is still just a second issue and we're yeah. just at this point in the story. If this was the end of the first issue, uh-huh. I think I'd feel a lot more satisfied where, that would be where even, we were. That would be even more dense. Yeah. This book is yeah. dense. Yeah. So. But um, the fact that this is just the ending of the second issue, yeah. and I haven't really got... Although it's a 12-issue series, but yeah. we just haven't gotten to that main yeah, it's meat still, of the story. It's still starting. It just feels like I haven't, I'm, I haven't gotten it yeah. enough. Yeah, no, I would give it... But it's it good. A, it's very good, very well written, beautiful yeah. art. Yeah. But yeah, it's really good. I would give it probably eight and a half 
out of ten Lugos. That's fair. Not quite nine, but not 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 quite eight. Mm-hmm. I like it a lot. Yeah. And I'm gonna it's just a slower burn off. than I would want. Our last book of the week. This is the Phoenix Resurrection: The Return of Jean Grey with this nice, very nice. Uh, 3D cover. Look at that. And that's for the regular cover price. It's not like a variant cover or anything. That's cool. So that's nice. I didn't know those coming. Huh? Yeah, this one and then they're doing that Avengers uh, is going to be like a 3D cover. Um, this is by Matthew Rosenberg and this first issue is by Lino Francis Yu. Um, it's not the worst Lino Francis Yu art. Um, sometimes Lino Francis Yu is really, really good and sometimes he's really, really sketchy. I would say this is somewhere in between the two. Um, but it's a really cool story and definitely... Um, it pays if you're a long time X Men fan, long time, long time X Men yeah. fan, I think, because they're just some cool little um, little uh, things from the past that pop up in the story okay. that are really cool. Yeah, um, and it's just an, it's a cool first issue. Mm-hmm. Um, it brings all the X Men teams together. It sends them in like three or four different things. It has a cool first um, hook that starts the mystery, and the ending is a really cool. Uh, Part of the mystery, mm. and I, I'm just I'm really intrigued to see where it goes. I, I enjoyed it a lot. What yeah. do you think? Especially more than the uh, current X Men Blue and Gold books. Uh, yeah, and it's much better than the some of the current. I think the best X Men book right now is X Men. Um, Sashing. Sashing X Men. Mm-hmm. Um, the rest are kind of just eh. But uh, this is a cool book. Uh, it's a little generic X Men action in the beginning. Uh, set up the mystery. Set up uh, these teams. They send out to find out mm-hmm. what's going on. And then, like the second half of the book is what I like better. It's uh, it's very Twilight Zoney, very like yeah. Twin Peaks ish yeah. almost. Very like well, the I beginning is very Twin Peaks. Like, yeah, the that's true. Too. So the everything. beginning and the end are like Twin Peaksy yeah. and Twilight Zoney. Really cool. Middle's a little generic, but it's necessary. Mm-hmm. I think you got to get the X Men involved somehow. And then it just it's cool. It's setting up like a like if they're bringing her back. It's not the way I, th- I you think that they would do it. It's something mm-hmm. a little bit weirder, and I'm not sure where they're going. But I'm I'm, I'm on board. Yeah. It's cool. And the covers, I mean, it's, you know, it's just, it's, I mean, it doesn't move or anything, but it's just kind of, like, special. Yeah. And it's nice. It's really cool. I like it. Yeah. No, I would give it, uh, I would give it 7 out of 10 Lugos. Yeah. I enjoy it. I think it was my mm-hmm. second favorite of the week. I think that and Doomsday Clock were my favorite books of the week. Yeah, definitely. And then this is my least favorite, Hawkman. Oh, oh, I didn't, I didn't mind. I like the Star Wars one better. But no, it's, yeah, it's cool. Cool ending. I wonder where they're going to go with the, some of the characters that they bring in here. Like, if it's, I have a feeling you know, it's like, I mean, is it I real or is it not real? I think it's. Yeah, all well, like parts of her. Yeah, like maybe memory or yeah, it's her possible being. she might have created this world. But uh, it's cool. It's yeah. really cool. You should pick up some of these books. You pick up some other books. Yes. Uh, if you didn't get anybody Christmas gifts or Hanukkah gifts, or now gifts, is the time. It's still, get, still time. Yes, and if you didn't get the gifts that you wanted to, come to the shop and buy yourself the gifts. Mm-hmm. Nobody's stopping you. It's yeah, 2017. Yeah. It's almost 2000. You can buy your own Christmas. You can buy gifts. your own gifts, yeah. and you can buy gifts for us too. Yeah, but no problem. We will appreciate those. Yeah. We, yeah. Accept, we accept all kinds of gifts. Yeah, come to the shop mm-hmm. and uh, pick them up and buy us some gifts. Yeah, and we'll see you yeah. in the new year. Yep. Yeah. Happy New Year. <laughs> see you next year. Ha ha ha. <laughs> no one's ever heard that before. I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>